Hey, what's up? Welcome back to The Artist Influence. Brian here again. Uh, today I want to talk about a question that I get a lot, and it's something that's really important for professional dancers, but also the way I tackle this question will help you out if you're in any type of entrepreneurial endeavor. And It's really about marketing yourself, and it's about putting yourself out there in the best way. But the specific question I've been getting is, Brian, I've been dancing for a little while now, a couple years. Um, I live in New York or LA, one of the major hubs for uh, professional dance in the United States at least, and I've been trying to get an agent. I've been, you know, I've been waiting for agency auditions, and I've been asking around people, and I just can't seem to get an agent yet. So how do I get an agent? And what can an agent do for me? And do I really need an agent as a professional dancer? And, you know, the answers to those questions are a little complicated. They're not totally as simple as um, yes or no, but I can tell you for sure that getting an agent does not have to be as difficult as most dancers make it out to be. There's a couple simple strategies that you can use um, in your daily life and the way you approach people and the way you make connections in the industry and how you audition to actually set yourself up to get an agent quicker um, and to get a better agent that's going to really look out for your best interests as a performer. So the first thing to do is uh, to figure out what agencies you want to work with. And, you know, there's several agencies now. I'm not going to list them all here. Some of the major ones, um, you know, is Block Talent Agency. They're in uh, L.A. and New York. There's Clear Talent Group. There's MSA. There's DDO. I'm not sure if DDO is still around, but they're a smaller agency. There's uh, um, CESD. Uh, the list goes on and on. There's tons of agencies, especially in L.A. There's more agencies popping up every year. Um, which is great because they allow us as dancers to kind of step back and not have to do all the work of negotiating our own contracts, trying to get more money from production and chasing people down for paychecks. I mean, the list goes on and on. So agencies are really important and agents are really important. But how you get an agent? So the first step is to identify what agencies you want to work with, you know, and that really depends on what type of dancer you are. Are you a hip hop dancer? Are you a dancer that wants to work more in the commercial world, the TV world? Are you a dancer that wants to do more theater and Broadway? Um, are you a dancer who also acts and really wants to pursue acting? Uh, are you a dancer that's a triple threat? Can you dance, sing, and act? Um, are you a choreographer? You know, there's so many different things that you want to really research the agencies you want to work with and the agencies that work the best for you. For this video, I'll talk specifically about just professional dancers in the commercial world. So in the commercial world, um, there's several agencies that are really good and, and that people recommend to work with, but the most important thing for you is to identify which agency works with the choreographers that you want to work with. Because while it's obviously not um, not uh, absolutely necessary for you to be on the same agency as a certain choreographer to work with them. What does happen sometimes in this industry, and people will tell you, is that choreographers will work in-house. And what in-house means is they'll work for certain projects exclusively with dancers with the agency that they're represented by. So, you know, you can look at um, an agency like Block and look at their roster of choreographers and um, certain gigs that come up you know, maybe if it's a job where they don't have time to hold an audition and they just have to do uh, direct bookings. So they just basically, the agency, the agents go to their roster of clients um, and they sit with the choreographer and the client, whether it's a, a producer or um, a casting director, and go through people's headshots and resumes and kind of pick who they want for this job without even an audition. And a lot of times those jobs... Um, they get taken by the people that are on the same agency as that choreographer. So there's definitely benefits to being on the same agency as some of your favorite choreographers who you really want to work with. So that's step one. Yeah, research the agencies. Research what choreographers are represented by that agency and kind of make a, a list of, you know, three to five of your top number one agencies that you want to work with because of the choreographers that they represent. Also... Look at the type of work the agency does. Some agencies are more geared towards film and TV. Other agencies are very, very focused in commercials or uh, theater. Um, some agencies kind of do the whole range. So you want to kind of pay attention to what type of jobs that their clients are booking and uh, what type of dancing their clients are doing. The third thing to do in identifying agencies that you might want to work with as a dancer and that might want to represent you is to look at their roster of clients. Because... Basically, agencies are, especially dance agencies, 
generally have a lot of clients that they represent. It's not the same thing as like an acting agency or a smaller boutique agency where you have maybe one or two agents that represent a dozen or so clients, not that many. Most of the time with the dance agencies, the, especially the major dance agencies, is that they represent hundreds of clients. And their rosters are always um, growing and uh, they're always looking for things that they don't have. So the biggest thing, especially if an agency is holding an audition, the number one thing that an agency holding an audition is looking for is probably new talent, but they're also looking to fulfill specific needs that they have in their agency. So certain types, certain looks. Um, girls over 5'6", or, or guys under 5'9", or over 5'9". It all just depends on what they have in their roster and their client database that they don't, or that they need, and that they're looking for, and trying to fill that need by having auditions. So a lot of times when you audition for an agency, guys, it's really a crapshoot. They might be looking for one or two people. They might be looking for ten people. You never know, but it oftentimes has a lot to do with who they have on their roster and what clients they already represent and what type of looks they need to represent. So you gotta know what your look is, you gotta know what your demographic is, you gotta know what ages you can play. All of those things are things that you do as a professional dancer in your class taking and your auditioning and then you're just thinking by yourself and, and, and planning your career. Um, all of those things you just need to know. You need to know what types you can fit. You need to know what ethnicities you can play. You need to know all of that stuff. And that will help you find agencies that might have an opening for you. So after you figure out all that and you get your list of three to five agencies that you want to work with, how do you approach them? How do you get an agent? There's so many different ways. Obviously there's auditioning. Um, I find the minority of people, not very many people at all, uh, get agents through auditioning. A lot of times the way people get agencies and get agency representation is through referrals, through networking, or through being scouted by that agency. So scouting means if an, if an agency comes to observe a class, right, or um, an agency comes to observe a showcase like Carnival or Cyberite in New York City or any one of the other choreography showcases where people are performing uh, in the industry. Um, and they're usually free shows, they happen a couple times a year. Carnival is usually the biggest one. Uh, but if you Google them, um, agencies will go and sit there at a table and they'll, they'll watch the talent. If there's someone that stands out to them, that strikes them as something that they could use and market, then they might approach you and, and want to have a meeting with you. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is through referrals and networking. Um, that's the way that I got my agent, uh, actually, long story short. I became friends with a couple of really amazing dancers here in New York City um, and I've, I'd been here for a couple months and I had asked them if they were comfortable with sending my resume and headshot to their then agent um, and through that basic little uh, exchange and then a couple follow up emails and stuff I was able to start being represented by that agency. Now as years went on and stuff I ended up switching agencies to, to one that I was more comfortable working with that I felt could represent me better um, but that's how I got in. That's how I got originally represented. And that's a way that a lot of people get represented. So what you need to do as a new dancer, especially to the industry, while you're networking and making connections with people and building those relationships, and remember, not building fake relationships, not building relationships where you're trying to get something from someone, but building real, genuine relationships, just good you know, acquaintances, good colleagues, and good friends. And over time, as you become more comfortable with people, uh, Take notice of what agencies your friends are represented by and kind of what agencies you might want to be represented by. And when it feels appropriate, when it feels right, you can ask one of your friends to, you know, maybe forward your stuff to their agent to tell them to check it out. Um, agency Agents actually, you know, they don't mind this. It's, it's, they don't want it to happen so much that their inbox is getting clogged up and all their clients are trying to refer their friends. Obviously, that's why you got to use a little discretion with this. But... A good client referral or a choreographer, a choreographer referral to an agency can really help you become um, signed and represented. So, you know, if you have some friends that are represented by the agency that you want to work with, maybe ask them to uh, refer you, to send your stuff to them. Um, another thing you can do is you can submit yourself to an agency. Uh, most agencies have submission guidelines. And a lot of people don't do this step, a lot of people skip this uh, tactic because they think, oh, the agencies, they get so many submissions, they're not going to open them up and stuff, but they look at them, they open them up. 
and certain agencies have a set day every week that they look at new submissions and that's something that you could find out by asking um, that's something you could find out by asking around or doing a little research on your own and one of the things you can do one strategy if you know that an agency looks at all their new submissions on Fridays uh, what you can try to do is submit your stuff close to that day so it's higher up in their inbox so it's one of the first submissions they see when they start looking at submissions so you can kind of not guarantee that you're going to get looked at, but at least set yourself up a little bit better. And you know, that might work, that might not, but it's a tactic that you can use. It's a strategy for you. Uh, but overall, you know, being referred and submitting yourself are probably the two best ways uh, to get with an agency. And you know, being referred is one thing, but being referred and then following up and being persistent are two completely different things. And being persistent is very important. You don't want to be annoying, but being persistent is what is going to get you noticed in this industry over time. Because, look, the deal is this. There's so many dancers and so few jobs compared to the amount of dancers there are. So all those casting directors that are making the decisions and the agents that are submitting those dancers, those agents see so many faces across their desk every day. And it's really a numbers game. It's hard to, to get yourself to stick in someone's mind when they're seeing so many different faces and so many different talent levels and so many different dancers over the course of a week, months, or years. So being persistent is really important in actually getting noticed. So one of the things you can do is follow up. Yeah, so if you submit your stuff to an agency, right, and a month goes by, you don't hear anything. A couple weeks goes by, you don't hear anything. Send them another email. Yeah, email them again. Reach out again. Just say, hey, this is so and so. You know, I've, I've heard such great things about your agency. Um, I have a couple friends who are represented by you guys, and they have nothing but great things to say. You always want to lead up with something positive because you want to work with the agency for a reason, right? They're a good agency. They represent their clients well. They get their clients a lot of work. These are all things that you should praise them for. You should say, hey, you know, I've, I've heard such great things about your agency. I'd be, I'd be so excited and, uh, and interested in possibly working with you guys. Um, you know, I've included my inf uh, my information, um, included this email as my resume, my headshot, um, my demo reel, any links that you have of yourself, add in there. And you know, whenever you guys get a chance, I'd love if you could check it out and maybe get back to me if you're interested. You know, something simple, something casual. Uh, you're not begging. You're not sounding. Um, you're not sounding uh, needy, and you're not trying too hard. You know, you're you're being professional and you're reaching out. Do that keep doing that yeah be persistent with that every time that you're doing a, a free show or you have new footage of yourself send it over if the agency has an info email where just general questions come through you could send it to there if you're lucky enough to get an agent's actual email uh, through one of your friends or a contact obviously this is something that agents are just not going to give out to people that aren't their clients but but it is a tactic that people use. So if you can get one of those emails, you can get in contact with an actual agent and start a rapport, start a conversation, and not a conversation where every time you communicate with them, it's like, oh, please represent me. It's just a conversation where you're just updating them. You're keeping them updated with what you're doing. You're letting them know what you're up to. That can pay big dividends in the long run because what happens is you start occupying more real estate in that agent's mind. Um, that agent actually will see you at, at events and stuff or even auditions and know your face even though you're not one of their clients they start knowing your face and they start learning your name and you become more than just a face to them you become someone and even if it's subconscious at first you start becoming someone that they actually care about that they become invested in because you keep you keep showing them that you're persistent and that you're hungry and that you're you're committed to this as a career and that's something that agents want to see because one thing that agents hate more than anything are clients that aren't doing the work that they should be doing because one of the common misconceptions of having an agent in the industry and I just want to you know just cut it out right now is that once you get an agent you're set the gigs are gonna roll in the paychecks are gonna roll in you'll be able to support yourself and you have not a care in the world and they're just gonna keep giving you jobs and that is a hundred and 50% not true. It's never been true. It might be true at times. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones who uh, happens to be in LA or another market that's very saturated with jobs and you happen to have a look that's very marketable at the moment and there happen to be some different music artists that are using a lot of the same looks for dancers so you're able to fit into that niche. 
So it might feel like your agent's doing all the work and you're just getting gig after gig after gig, and that's amazing. You could have a couple good months like that, maybe a good year like that, but over the course of your entire career, over the course of 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes 25 years, depending if you move into choreography and production, you're never at a position where you're just hands off and all the work is coming to you. You're always doing work yourself. You're always sending emails. You're always looking for your own opportunities. You're always looking for your own income. Because one thing's for sure, especially when you first get an agent, it's not going to be like you sign the papers and all of a sudden you don't have to, you can quit your part time job and you're going to have gigs. It's not going to be like that. Some months you might get a bunch of gigs and have so much income, and other months you might have nothing. And there might be stretches of five or six months at a time where nothing happens, no gigs happen, and you're relying on money you have saved or other jobs you have. That's why I always advocate to dancers to diversify to have other areas of life that they're actually good at too and that they're passionate about. One of, the, uh, one of the lines of thinking with arts and with dance and stuff is that you should just go full force for it. And I am definitely a supporter of that. You need to focus and you need to put 100% of your energy into something. But you shouldn't do that to the point where you're endangering your future and your financial security as a person and your ability to pay your bills. So you have to know what your limits are, you have to know what your budget is, you have to know how much money you need to survive and that's all stuff that you should be thinking about as a dancer and it's stuff that I might do other videos on in the future of just breaking down how to figure that those things out. But I'm getting off topic, back to agents. So those are a couple really good strategies to get an agent. You know, you can get it by auditioning but that really doesn't happen for very many people. Submitting yourself is a great way. Being persistent with this submitting yourself because chances are the first time you submit yourself, they're not going to remember you. Yeah, so keep submitting yourself. Um, you know, every so often, whenever you have new stuff to share with them, just keep letting them know what you're doing and eventually they will take notice. And while you're doing that, be networking, be introducing yourself to agents at different events. Ask your friends who are represented by that agent if you're at an event and that agent happens to be there and it's a casual atmosphere. Ask them to introduce you so that way that you can that agent can start putting a name to your face that they keep seeing everywhere. Um, and obviously do all of this stuff with with a pure intent. You know you don't do it as someone who's trying to just get ahead and someone who's trying to just you know manipulate people to get what they want because that people can sniff that. That's an energy that you put out in the world. And ungenuine energy is not usually an energy that people want to work with. You know, even though we're in the professional world, we're in the dance industry and stuff, people still want to generally work with people that they like and that they enjoy. So you have to gel with someone energy-wise too. Yeah, and certain agents won't work with you. They won't, they won't really mesh with your energy and they won't be the best agent for you. So part of it is just meeting different agents and engaging with them and networking and kind of thinking in your mind who kind of fits with you, who seems like they're a good agent fit for you because it really is a partnership. You know, agents take 10% of whatever you make. Sometimes they take more depending on certain jobs. Managers definitely take more, but they're, you're working together. Yeah, so they're getting you the opportunities, but it's up to you to actually go into the audition room and execute and make that casting agent hire you. There's instances where agents can kind of help you out with that. They can play politics a little bit. They can suggest you to different casting directors and that stuff does happen. But 99% of the time, it's about you. It's about your talent, it's about your performance, and it's about whether or not you're right or wrong for the job. And that's the most important thing, is whether or not you're right or wrong for the job. Or whether or not you're right or wrong for a certain agency. So, you know, those are a couple tips that you guys can put into practice and kind of change the way you think about getting an agent a little bit. It's not just about waiting for an agency audition once a year. I mean, you're going to waste time doing that. You need, to, you need to utilize every area you can when you're new to your dance career to get yourself in the game, to get yourself to more auditions, to get yourself to more opportunities and more people to see you. That is the number one name of the game when you're a first dancer. You have to get... Or, first dancer, when you're a starting dancer, you have to get yourself out there. You got to be seen. If you're not seen, you're forgotten and you're not going to be known about and you're not going to get opportunities. So get to those auditions, network with those agents, network with your friends, take note, do your research, know what agencies are currently really popular and really um, 
well known, know which ones aren't, know which ones are currently booking different jobs. I mean, this is all stuff that comes into being a professional dancer that's beside just the dance aspect of it. There's so many more aspects to being a professional dancer other than just dance. And agents and agencies and figuring out which agency is right for you, that's just one aspect of many. And we're going to cover all of them in these artist influence videos. So I encourage you guys to keep checking out the YouTube channel. Um, you know, search it for it on YouTube, hashtag The Artist Influence, my name, Brian Henninger. You'll find all the videos there. Also, check out my website, theartistinfluence.com. It's going to be launching very soon. Uh, I'll make a special video announcing the site launch when that comes up. And just keep engaged with me, guys. Um, message me on Facebook. Uh, send me a comment on YouTube. Any specific questions you guys want tackled, if it's as it's related to professional dance, um, getting jobs as a professional dancer, networking yourself, advertising yourself. Um, anything. I mean, anything related to life, uh, goal setting and stuff. I'm all about setting goals. And I'm all about achieving those goals. And I'm all about pushing myself further and continuing to grow as a person outside of just dance in every area of life. Because I think when you're growing, you're living. And when you're not growing, you're dying. And uh, that's something that I believe. So, you know, anything you guys are interested about, anything related to inspiration or motivation or anything related to professional dance, shoot me a question, shoot me an email, shoot me a message on Facebook. And uh, I'll make a video, all right? So until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. This has been Brian with The Artist Influence.